Hey, what's up everyone? This is Ryan Perry. Today I'm going to do a video for you on a subject I'm very passionate about, and that is all of these weedless, snagless, beast hook style swim baits out there. There's never been more of them, and most importantly, there's never been better versions of them. With the growing trend, more people are fishing them, we've learned from them, and uh, let me tell you something. Um, it, it really hurts me when I hear someone say that they don't have confidence in soft baits or that they've lost a lot of fish on them. And I can relate to that because I've been fishing them for a long time and I have lost a lot of fish on them. Not so much in the last few years as I've gotten better, as I've gotten tired of losing big fish, particularly, you know, the double digit size fish, the few bites that I get at a time of year. When you lose those, you really think hard about what went wrong. So what this video is really going to be about is how I can give you my past experiences, what's worked for me, and how to greatly increase your hookup ratio to landing ratio with all of these snagless swim baits. The number one tip I can give to you, this is going to um, hurt some people's feelings, guys, clear water guys like out in California, or the number one tip is, is going to be like a vampire seeing sun. Oh God, it's braided line. The number one reason why people are losing so many fish on these baits is one, you didn't know you got bit. Two, you didn't have enough drive from a long cast to get the hook to penetrate. Three, the hook pinned but did not penetrate in the mouth. There's a difference, like the hook can get into the mouth enough to where you're keeping pressure on that fish. The second that fish gets leverage and throws the opposite direction, the hook that did not penetrate comes out. Braided line. I've fished a ton of braided lines, and I really can't tell you which style, this or that. I've fished a bunch of them. This is what I like. I've tried a bunch of different things in the last few years. This has just been a really good braid. This is a Daiwa J braid, the red labeled one. It lasts a long time. It casts great. It's really, really strong. You want to go at least 65 pounds. I don't see a need to go heavier, and you definitely don't want to go lighter. Not 30 pounds, not 50 pounds. 65 pound braid for reasons of strength. A lot of guys when they hear about swim baiting and braided line, the first thing they can imagine is a bait snapping off. Second thing would be backlashes. Backlashes are going to happen, but that comes with doing your homework on the reel you have and making sure you set up your reel appropriately. And a great thing about braid is that it takes a lot of pressure off while you're casting heavy baits all day. You don't have to cast nearly as hard to get the distance you want. I'm, I'm personally, I like to make the longest cast possible. I want the most distance between me and the fish as possible to increase your uh, stealth. Now that might sound contradictory to guys in clear water because you're fishing braid. You, you know, you might be afraid that fish can see that. So here's what I do when I'm on clear water. This is also going to bother some people because this is like, can be kind of a sore subject and it was for me as well until I figured this out. 65 pound braid. This is P-Line Shensei. This is 20 pound fluorocarbon leader line. You join these two together with an Alberto knot. Seven wraps up, seven reps back down through the loop. I'm not going to do a video on how to tie the Alberto knot. There's plenty on YouTube. This combination is direct drive with the Alberto knot. It goes through the guides like butter. You don't have to cast nearly as hard and if you need stealth run a 25 30 foot long leader of this to this if you're new to swim baiting new to fishing there is a big difference between fluorocarbon line and fluorocarbon leader line fluorocarbon leader line to join to braid you want the fluorocarbon leader line okay we made that clear the way this line is set up this is bomb proof this is this is awesome stuff i remember my friend tag watson turned me on to this a year or two ago and i have not looked back when i need to create more stealth in clear water, this is what I go to. It works really well. I've fished it in 20 foot of water clarity and watch fish come a long ways to hit my baits. It works, trust me. The number three thing that I would highly recommend is a high gear ratio, three or 400 size reel. High gear ratio reels. Here's why. While you're fishing these baits, let's say, I hear people tell me all the time, Oh, I lost fish on these baits, but I'm fishing with monofilament and a five gear ratio reel. All right, so monofilament has a lot of stretch. It's not very sensitive. It's affordable, so I get that. But with 
with the beast hook style baits, with the weedless style swim baits, this is the highest learning curve in swim baiting, in my opinion, because of so many variables. Your gear has to be correct with this stuff, or you're going to lose more fish than you had to. So, a 7 plus gear ratio reel. Here's why. When you're fishing these baits, slow or burning them, there's times, I mean, it's almost like the fish never eat the bait the same way twice. So you might have one fish not five feet of slack in your line. If you're fishing a five gear ratio reel, it's going to take you an extra crank or two to get that slack up before you can get the pressure set, then set the hook. That's what you have to do with these things. There's times where the fish come from underneath and they smack the bait and it feels like a train just hit you and you feel like you don't even need to set the hook because there's so much pressure you're worried something's going to break. If that happens, still set the hook as hard as you can. Still set the hook. Your, your, your gear's not going to break. That's why you invest in quality stuff so that your gear does not fail you when this happens. As far as reels, um, I have tried several. I do really like the Shimano Tranks. My absolute favorite one though is the uh, Japanese model, the Abu Garcia Big Shooter HS. This is a great reel. It has nice big meaty handles so if you're not paying attention and a fish hits you or not slack in your line, you still have a good grip on the handle to burn up that line until everything locks and still smash the hook set. Fantastic reel for this. Cast a mile. This one's three years old. So I want to give you guys a few options of things that I've seen with these baits, fishing them all over the place. I've fished them in several states. Pound for pound, if you're going to start fishing these and you're new, new to this, or you just don't have one of these yet, get a working class zero 7.5 inch Citizen. This pound for pound is the best one made that I'm aware of. It has a nice collapsing chamber, as you can see. That's more than enough uh, hook penetration to get around any size largemouth you're going to hook up with. It swims great, it gets bit, doesn't have anything up top here interfering when a fish clamps down on it. The hookup ratio is really good with this one. This is a great, great option to start with. I mean, there's tons and tons of options out there, too, you know. Um, there's a bunch of great options. Um, Shellback Customs, this is the Blue Go one. I actually turned this one into a line through. You can see there's teeth marks all over this one. Uh, Burrito Baits Taquito, that brings up a great point. Short Striking Fish. So there's going to be times where you're fishing these baits, and you're getting hit. You're getting hit, you're getting hit, and nothing's hooking up. It's usually little fish. Throwing a treble hook on the bottom here around your hook can change your day from 50 bites that you didn't hook up with more than maybe two or three to catching a lot of those fish. If you're trophy hunting, that's probably frustrating when you catch 25, 30 dinks, but that's a heck of a lot better than a uh, skunk or, you know, two or three. Uh, I can't tell you how many times that saved me uh, a really frustrating day. Just that one hook, just simple as that. Another thing that's really, really helped my uh, weedless game is under spinners. I can't tell you how many times I've been fishing these and struggling, and I go and I throw one of these on there, and now I don't know if it's a confidence thing or if it's really the fish turning on, but regardless, I almost never fish these anymore without an under spinner on. Clear water, yes. Muddy water, yes just seen it make the difference so many times I hardly ever go without a flashy attachment somewhere on the bait. You can also crash this into cover and kill it and when you kill it not only do you get the thump of the bait coming over whatever that is rock or wood or whatever but this thing bounces off and then you kill it and it does something different. You can twitch it and it does something different and then continue to retrieve. I've caught several fish that I don't think I would have caught in the past without having all that extra madness going on to really get that fish to react. Alright guys, I'm sure there's a ton of little things I've left out of this video. If you have any questions about this, feel free to let me know. Uh, let me just follow up with, I can't stress the importance of reeling up to a fish when you get bit on these things. Because every bite's different almost, you just always, it, you kind of always have to be ready. You always have to have a good grip on your reel. You don't want to be holding the reel so hard that you're going to give yourself carpet tunnel, but you need a good meaty grip on the reel and the second something feels different the second you feel the bite reel up as fast as you can until everything locks and when I say locks I mean until it feels like it's gonna pull you forward then still set the hook I mean haymaker swing for the fence if you guys enjoy this video please like and subscribe I will have more
Booyah! She's a beauty.